Hey guys, I'm Sun, I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In the past two episodes, I went into great detail at explaining why Signal is such an amazing app for privacy. I went about comparing SMS versus iMessage versus Signal from a technological standpoint. And I also explained why I believe governance is everything. If you haven't watched those episodes, I'll link them up here or there. I don't know which site it is yet and I'll put them in the description. I recommend looking at those first unless you're ready to pull the trigger with Signal and you've made your choice. Now if that's the case, today's episode's for you. I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up Signal using the phone number that you currently have for your phone or perhaps using another phone and what are the pros and cons of both of these approaches. Now, if you're going to be using the phone number that you're currently currently <laughs> that you're currently using to make calls and send messages, well, that's great because Signal will use your contacts to build your uh, social graph. And if you're using the same number, well, your contacts already have that in their phone, so you'll be discoverable by them. So as soon as you install Signal for the first time, boop, they'll know about it, and you can start using Signal. Ooh, that was a long. Whew, okay. Now, uh, that being said, since that number is already in the public domain, well, as soon as you're on Signal, they'll know. Uh, the alternative to that is to use a fresh number that was never associated with your identity on Signal. And that's actually a way of having even more privacy. But I mean, as I said, you won't be discoverable. So there's pros and cons. If you want to have a number, if you want to create a Signal account with a number that isn't a number that you currently own, well, you need a separate phone number. And there's two approaches that I've used to do that. Number one approach is to walk in a store and get a SIM card on a prepaid plan. In Canada, Rogers offers pretty good prepaid plans. You can just walk in a store, get a SIM card, it's about 20 bucks, and then you can put money onto that SIM card. And as long as you put at least $10 on the SIM card every six months, you're the owner of the phone number. You have to make sure you never lose the phone number because if you lose the phone number, well, you've just lost your Signal account. So that's pretty simple. The cool thing with that approach is when you walk in the store, they don't ask you for ID. So uh, in the privacy world, we call that KYC, know your customer. Rogers is not obliged by law to take some of your ID and make sure that you are who you say you are. So you can even ask a homeless person, for instance, to walk in the store, get you a SIM card, and the same uh, can be done for uh, those little top-up cards. So every six months, you need to get one of them, put them in it, uh, put them in it, <laughs> put that $10 on that SIM card, and you're good to go. And that's what I've done here for today's privacy guide. I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that. Um, and the phone that I have here has a prepaid SIM card in it. As I mentioned many times, this here is my real phone. The one that I have here is one that's dedicated to the guides. Now, the other approach is to use a virtual phone number in the cloud. And that approach is pretty cool, but it usually entails KYC. So the providers will end up knowing who you are because you need a credit card to uh, top up that account. So I'll go about here uh, and show you what this would look like on Twilio. Twilio is one of the world's leading voice over IP providers. So uh, first things first, let's turn on screen recording on my desktop. All right, so uh, if you're gonna be choosing that Twilio option, you're more of a power user, so I won't go into great detail and show you every step. You need to sign up and create an account. Once that's done, you'll have access to your console. And within the console, Twilio will actually give you free credit so that you can start exploring their platform. And that allows you to get that phone number. That phone number is the one that you'll use for signal, but you have to make sure that you're routing text messages sent to that to your smartphone, to your personal real phone number. As I mentioned, this approach is not as private as getting a dedicated SIM card, but it's pretty good. Uh, and maybe at the end of this episode, if I remember, I'll explain why you're not really private with the SIM card anyway, uh, anyways, because your phone has this phone, your physical phone. Actually, let's talk about this now. Who, um, little, little uh, sidetrack here, but okay. So every device, every phone has a specific unique identifier. It's called an I-M-I-M-E-I. Oh man, I always mess this up. Let me make sure that I'm not saying 
stuff here that's not accurate. If you go in general and then if you go in about and you scroll down, you'll see that you can see your phone's IMEI, IMEI. That's a unique identifier for your phone. So since you're using that currently on a carrier, well, that IMEI is registered under your name. So if you pop in a more <laughs> anonymous or a, you know, if you pop in a prepaid SIM card and you're thinking that you're private, you're not because your IMEI will be registered on that SIM card and boom, your cover's blown. So none of these solutions today are whistleblower proof. If you're into that level of privacy, smash that subscribe button and we'll be discussing things like that later in the series. Whew. Back to Twilio. So you have that phone number. When you get to that page for the first time, it will ask you, do you wanna set up a trial phone number? And you'll say yes. You can choose a phone number that's in the country of your choice. Most countries will have SMS capabilities. That's what you want. Once this is done, if you click on the hamburger menu and you scroll down and you go in Twi ML bins, I created a little gist on GitHub that is here. And you can just copy this and back here, create, create, click create, uh, paste it here, give it a name. We'll call it message forwarding. Boom. Or you know what? Let's, yeah, that, that works. Okay. And you need to change the number here for your real number. So as I said, text messages sent to this will use that little piece of XML logic to forward calls to your real phone number. And that's how you'll be able to activate signal. So once this is done, once you change that for your real number, hit create, then go back to the hamburger menu, scroll up phone numbers, and then you click on your phone number and you scroll down and you go into messaging, replace the webhook by the TwiML bin, select message forwarding, hit save, and you're good to go. You can now use this phone number here as your signal account phone number. Now in the public domain, nobody knows that you're behind that phone number. So that's actually giving you a pretty great level of privacy. But if ever, uh, you know, a nation state surveillance program starts digging, they're going to go to Twilio because they'll know that that phone number is registered to Twilio and they'll see who's behind that account. And given your credit card, boom, your cover is broken. So as I said, you have no cover right now if you're using your personal phone with a prepaid card or if you're using uh, Twilio. If you want to know more about this level of privacy, as I said, we'll talk about that later in this series. So let me start screen recording here on my iPhone as well. Sound is on. Yes. So I'm going to be showing to you guys how to set up your Signal account. Obviously, if you guys are power users, this is not uh, elaborate enough. So pretty much all of the information that you wanted to hear has been heard. Uh, that being said, if you want to see what Signal looks like for the first time, if you don't want to go about installing it, if you just want to see it in action, let's do this. If you click on Signal for the first time, and this is an old iPhone, so you have to wait a little bit, uh, it will ask you to accept the terms and the privacy policy. As I said, Signal is a really great company and they really care about your privacy, so you can go about reading it, but they're, they're cool. Uh, once you enable permissions, it will ask you to access your contacts and send you push notifications, both of which are perfectly fine. As I mentioned, your social graph will be derived from your contacts, so you need to give Twilio access to those contacts. Now, I'm going to be masking this in post-production. Sorry about that. I'm putting in my phone number here. That's the one that I have on a prepaid card, as I mentioned earlier. And then you need to enter that little uh, code here to confirm that you own the number. Okay. Now, uh, there's a new feature in this version of Signal that allows you to import your stuff, all of your message history from another iPhone. In this case, uh, we're just registering it uh, as a new uh, account. Okay, so now you need to create a profile. That's where I'm going to call myself uh, John Doe. Hit save. And now we need to create a pin. That pin is super important. That's what we're gonna to use to protect you from uh, someone trying to hack your Signal account using a SIM port attack. If you don't know what a SIM port attack, I explained that in the first episode on Signal. I'll link it up here or there, or if I've linked it already, I cannot relink it, it's in the description. 
Um, yeah, so we're gonna create a pin. Now I'm gonna mask this again and post, sorry about that. Confirm the pin. And we're in. Okay, some of your contacts are already in Signal, including Sun Newton. As I said, it uses my contacts to build the social graph. So I connected, uh, I actually on my personal phone, I added that phone number as a contact for John Doe, and we can now have a conversation. So if I go about talking to myself, that's kind of awkward here, and I send myself, yo. Did that work? Yes, it worked. I don't have volume now, but as you can see, the message did come in on my personal phone. The first thing you wanna do on Signal when you're in person beside your contacts is confirm their identity. That is such a crucial difference between Signal and other apps. I explained those differences in the episode where I said that uh, governance is everything. So what you wanna do here, so I have my personal phone and I have the phone that I'm using here for the privacy guides. So what I wanna do is I wanna click on settings for Sun. Now that that's done, I wanna go in view safety number and the number that is shown here on the screen will match the number that I see on my personal phone. So that's the way that you wanna, that, that's what you wanna to use to confirm the identity between you and someone else. This is very strange because it's between me and me right now, but suppose that this phone here was your girlfriend's phone or your mother's phone or a partner's phone, whatever. So what you wanna do is open signal on the other phone. So you can imagine that I'm doing exactly what I just did on this phone and I click on John Doe, then I click on tap here for settings and I can view the safety number. And then what I can do is uh, confirm that they're the same. So yeah, yeah, they're the same. And then you mark it as verified. You can also use the QR code to just scan the QR code on the other phone. I didn't do this because I don't wanna play on my personal phone during the privacy guides, but you get the gist. So now that this contact is confirmed, it says that cryptographically speaking, when I'm talking to that person, I'm sure I'm talking to that person. Someone cannot pull off a man in the middle attack or try to impersonate me uh, or that person. That being said, we've moved the threat model from infosec to opsec, but someone can still uh, can 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 still steal the the person's phone. So let's say I'm talking to a friend and that friend's phone has been physically compromised. Well, obviously someone can type instead of that person and my cover is blown. That conversation is no longer private. So you have to make sure that that person is who they say they are. What I like to do is actually set up a video face call, like a, a, what do we call this, video conferencing? You want, you want to call that person and enable the camera so then you can really see if that person is who they say they are. Someone could pull off a really sophisticated attack and face swap that person, but that's pretty much science fiction. Doing that, uh, what we call a deep fake, onto the Signal app is pretty, pretty badass. I don't think that that's possible, although conceptually, I guess it's theoretically possible. So now that we did that, um, that's pretty cool. The next thing you wanna do is set up disappearing messages. And depending on the level of privacy that you're looking for, I always suggest keeping that as low as possible. So then since this is a conversation between myself and, and my other self, well, 10 seconds is perfectly cool. Uh, if you're doing this with your parents, you may wanna leave a little more time because you know they look at the message and then they go in the kitchen, they come back and it's gone. So anyways, you get the point. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, there's a pretty much uh, no configuration that you need to do. If I go here and I go into privacy, everything here is totally cool. Oh, let me see about that. Read receipts is on. Okay, actually, that's totally up to you, but I personally like to disable read receipts, typing indicators, so that no one knows if I'm typing, if I've seen the message and stuff like this. Maybe you see things differently, but that's what I like doing. The next thing that I absolutely wanna enable is registration lock. That's what I mentioned earlier. That will protect you from SIM port attacks so someone cannot transfer your number to another SIM card and then try to impersonate you. So that's super important. Um, show calls in recent, I like to disable that because I don't want you know Signal to integrate with iOS too much. 
and then send link previews. I also like to disable that because, you know, I'm not using Signal for bells and whistles. I'm using it for the privacy it uh, brings to me. Then you can display an indicator here for sealed sender. I tend to enable that, but most people have migrated to the new version of Signal and sealed sender is pretty much a default now. Woo! Last thing, if you go in advance, you can disable the uh, debug lug and that's good practice. So that pretty much sums it all, uh, sums it up. If you're sending a picture to someone, there's a feature to make that picture a one-off so they can see it only once and stuff like this. But yeah, I, I guess that, that you'll experiment with this stuff. Really the most important takeaways of this episode is you wanna make sure that you confirm people's identity when you're in person with them. That is super important. That being said, you wanna know that if someone steals your friend's phone, then you're still compromised and you want to make sure that you enable disappearing messages because you don't want to have the whole conversation on your phone and then your phone gets seized and all of that conversation leaks. You want to make sure that messaging is ephemeral and signal on their servers sees that as ephemeral as well. So they're not keeping shit in the cloud. They're purging it as soon as the message has reached your phone. I hope that was insightful. If you're into privacy and you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, smash that subscribe button and you can drop a like that always helps the YouTube algorithm like my messages, uh, my messages, I had, whew, confuser, like these episodes and push them to more viewers. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon.